Welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Esther Vesey. The Nigerian police have insisted that Senate President Bukola Saraki is still under investigation for his alleged links to some of the suspects arrested for their roles in the Offa Bank robbery. Now, the four spokesman, Jima Moshud, in a fresh statement released on Wednesday, vowed that the police will not be cowed or succumb to intimidation in its ongoing investigation into the robbery. Now, the police say new revelations from further investigation into the matter shows that all the five gang leaders have direct connection to the Senate president. The police also allege that three suspected gang leaders followed Saraki to Olofa's palace when the Senate president paid a condolence visit to offer after the bank robbery. Moshid pledged that the investigation would be pursued to a logical conclusion. The Nigerian Senate has asked the Minister of Defense, retired Brigade General Mansour Dan Ali, to withdraw his statement on the suspension of anti grazing law in the country. Now, Dan Ali made the comments after a meeting with President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday. The issue was raised on the floor of the House by Senator Emmanuel Boacha of Tarapa South during plenary on Wednesday. Now, Boacha, in his comments on the floor of the House, described Dan Ali's comments as inhumane and terrible. However, after a debate on the matter, the Senate resolved to observe a minute of silence for the people who were killed and advised the Ministry of Defense to withdraw, the, to withdraw its statement on anti grazing law as the law was enacted under the law of the Benry State House of Assembly. Meanwhile, as part of efforts to improve security in the country, the federal government has approved the deployment of special security forces to Zamfara State with the aim of tackling the rising case of insecurity in the region. This was disclosed by the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, after a meeting with President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday. The Inspector General said the special forces will comprise of military, civil defense, and the police. He also noted that the joint operation will commence in two weeks. What I would say is that Zamfara, obviously, we are, we are going to, you know, let me, sorry. Zamfara, because yesterday, even before this meeting, we met with the CDS and the other service chiefs and our chief of operations in the general services. And we have resolved that we are going to send a team, you know, comprising of the military, the police, the civil defense, and most of these, uh, we are sending them to Zamfara to ensure that we have maximum protection at that point. The Nigerian Senate has resolved to probe an alleged human rights abuse by the Nigerian army. A report by Amnesty International, which was published last month, had accused the Nigerian military of raping women displaced by the insurgency and killing many people who refused to be moved from terrorist territories rescued from the insurgents. Now, the military and the Nigerian government has previously questioned the credibility of the report with the Nigerian army also threatening legal action against the group. Now, the Nigerian Senate has now agreed to step up and set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the allegation. The resolution follows a motion by Sheo Sani, Sani, who is dissatisfied with the reaction of the Nigerian government to the report, asked the Senate to reopen the issue for probe. Still on matters taken by the Senate on Wednesday, the Senate has confirmed four resident electoral commissioners for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The confirmed commissioners are Monday Udo Tom, Atahiru Garba Madami, Festus Okoye, and Ahmed Bello Mamou. Now, Mamou was confirmed notwithstanding his rejection by the Senate Committee on INEC. The committee report was overruled by the senators during plenary on Wednesday. Lawmaker Abdul Mumin Jibrin could be suspended from the House for Rep of Representatives if found guilty of the fresh allegations against him. The lawmaker has been accused of misrepresenting the lower legislative chamber regarding the ongoing rift between the National Assembly and the executive arm of the government. A joint executive session of both chambers of the Assembly met on Tuesday and urged the president to address some issues or face the invocation of powers of the legislature. But in reaction, a group of lawmakers 
parliamentary support group led by Jibrin that the decision reached at the end of the session were not endorsed by all the lawmakers. At plenary on Wednesday, Sunday Karimi from Kogi State called the attention of the House of of the House to Jibrin's statement, saying there is no need for him to be called to order because he's trying to turn the chamber upside down. And to judicial matters now, a federal high court sitting in Kaduna has granted bail to Ramalan Yero, a former governor of the state. Now, this follows his arraignment by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, over an alleged money laundering of 750 million Naira PDP campaign fund. The presiding judge, Justice Mohammed Shaibu, on Wednesday in his ruling, admitted the former governor to one million Naira bail and two shorties in like sum among whom must own a landed property in Kaduna State. Now, the judge also granted bail to the former Minister of State, Pa Nuhubia, former Kaduna State PDP Chairman, Harun Ogaya, and the former Secretary to Kaduna State Government, Hamza Ishak, all of whom are standing trial alongside Yero in a sum of one million naira and two shorties in like sum. They were also ordered to deposit their international passports to the court's register. Now, another batch of 171 Nigerians have again returned to Nigeria from Libya. The Nigerians returned to the country late on Tuesday through the assistance of the International Organization for Migration. Now, according to the National Emergency Management Agency, the returnees comprise of 70 female adults, including nine pregnant women, 90 male adults, three children, and eight infants. Now, eight of them are reported to have returned with minor health issues. Now, the Southwest Zonal Coordinator of the National Emergency Management Agency, Suleiman Yakubu, revealed the returnees on behalf, re, welcomed rather, the returnees on behalf of the federal government. He appealed to the returnees to be anti trafficking agents and advised others against embarking on Perilia's journey to Europe through Libya. Stakeholders in Nigeria's tourism sector have been speaking on the importance of the industry to Nigeria's economy. Now, at the 61st UN Tourism Summit holding in Abuja, the Minister of Tourism, Lai Mohammed, emphasized the need for all the ministers, ministries to work together to make the country attractive for tourists. Tourism depends on everything. Um, if, there's, if there's any epidemic in any part of the country, it's drops back you know tourism and this is why it's important for all departments agencies and ministers to cooperate with the ministry of tourism we are only coordinators uh, a lot will depend on what these other ministries do my ministry we don't build roads we don't build airports we don't build railways but all these are important for tourism to, to survive. And this is why you can see that close work relationship between our ministry and all these other agencies. Um, we are going to work in several concrete uh, objectives, which is in, was in my campaign uh, pre-election period and which is on my own agenda. And these are the things which is very interesting, interesting for Nigeria. This is edu education, and we agreed to think about to create something big uh, in Nigeria, for Nigeria and for Africa. This is innovation in Nigeria. I can promise you that will be one of the pioneer where we will start to promote and to support innovation because innovative ideas and young generation, they need our support and we are here to support them. Uh, of course, security issues are too important, and uh, we are working on that. Also speaking at the sideline of the event, the Legacy State Commissioner for Tourism, Steve Ayorinde, highlighted the benefits of tourism to the economy of Lagos State. Uh, from what the United Nations, the, uh, the, the Secretary General of WTO said that um, the value of what tourism contributes to the global economy keeps growing, keeps rising. And the same thing applies to Nigeria, particularly in Lagos, where we recorded, of course, that about 800 billion naira, you know, was captured as part of the GDP 
you know, of the Lagos economy in 2017 alone. So you can think of your hotels, you can think of people working in the music industry, in Hollywood, in fashion industry, in shopping, and every allied industry that has got something to do with travel, with tourism, with arts, with creative economy. Uh, for me, without a doubt, um, um, it's an industry that creates more jobs than agriculture, than banking and finance, and without a doubt, than the oil and gas. We believe that tourism is the new oil and gas for Nigeria, and we should give it everything that it deserves so that we can promote it to the whole world. The Abuja Division of the Federal High Court has refused an application seeking the compulsory disclosure of information regarding the cost of President Mohamed Buhari's medical treatment abroad. Now, Judge John Soho ruled on Tuesday that the Freedom of Information Act does not provide that such a disclosure should be made without the consent of the president. The suit was filed, filed by a group, the Advocacy of Societal Rights Advancement and De Development Initiative, after President Buhari spent more than 100 days in London last year on medical vacation. Right after this break is business news. Stay tuned. If you are giving a job to do, do it. Use the right materials, yeah, my brother, sister. Corruption out in my country. Oh, oh, hey, yeah, oh, oh. Corruption out in my yeah. country. Do the right thing, brother. Do the right thing, sister. Do the right thing, auntie. Corruption out in my country. Do the right thing, brother. Do the right thing, sister. Do the right thing, auntie. Corruption out in my country. Oh, oh, hey, yeah, oh, oh. Corruption out in my country. Welcome, you're watching Business News on News Now. I am Annetta Felix. Nigeria recorded an increase of 1.18 trillion naira in merchandise trade from 6.02 trillion naira in the fourth quarter of last year to 7.21 trillion naira in the first quarter of this year. The figures are contained in the Foreign Trade and Goods Report, which was released on Wednesday by the National Bureau of Statistics. Well, in this report, the Bureau said, the trade value of 7.21 trillion naira is also an increase of 35.07% when compared to the 5.33 trillion naira recorded in the corresponding first quarter of 2017. The report said the strong growth of in total trade in the reviewing quarter was mainly driven by the strong increase in exports. Stakeholders in the power sector have kicked against the bill to criminalize estimated billing. Babatinde Fashala, Minister of Power, Works and Housing, uh, the Nigerian Sec Electricity Regulatory Commission and the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors opposed the bill proposed by the House of Representatives. According to the stakeholders, the bill will worsen the electricity situation in the country. The bill aims to amend the Power Sector Reform Act to prohibit and criminalize estimated billing by discos and provide for compulsory installation of prepaid meters for all power consumers in Nigeria. But despite the opposition faced by the bill, the lawmakers said the only compromise was to incorporate some of the views expressed by stakeholders in the legislation. To news in oil, Brent crude futures rose more than 1% on Wednesday, on that after Venezuela raised the prospect of halting some crude oil exports. While Brent crude rose 78 cents, 
to $76.16 a barrel, while U.S. crude futures were up 33 cents at $65.85 a barrel. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and Russia will meet on June 22nd to 23rd to decide how much production they will increase as global inventories have tightened, while Venezuela's production has dropped more than expected. But U.S. sanctions on Iran are also threatening to reduce all exports from the OPEC producer. The Nigerian Stock Exchange today continued its slow but steady rise, recovering from 13 consecutive days in the red. The markets closed with a 1.53% rise in the All Share Index, which stood at 38,435.29 basis points, leaving the market capitalization at 13.922 trillion naira. With a total of 5,285 deals exchanged in hand, at 6.674 billion naira. The market closed today with 49 percentage gainers and 16 percentage losers. Leading the gainers charts, Nigerian Brewers, Guinness, Wapco Allied PLC, and Dangote Cement saw their shares rise by 4.49, 5, 9.35, and 0.88 percent, respectively. While on the flip side was Okomo Oil Pam, Cement Company of Northern Nigeria. May and Baker Nigeria PLC and Guarantee Trust Bank. However, the banking sector was the toast of the day as traders mostly patronized the stocks of Zenith Bank, Fidelity Bank, United Bank for Africa, and Axis Bank. Well, that's it on Business News. News Now continues in a moment. Do stay with us. Corruption not in my country. Now, yeah, yes, sir. Okay, why well, go come find 300 naira change? I better look for change now. Ah, don't do business. Hey, Timmy, are they bro? I be, mm -hmm. hey, I beg, uh, give me 200 naira. Make I take sort out this guy. Bless him, no get change. Hey, give us. I said 200. Give him 100 naira. Yeah, hey. okay, I agree to pay 200. I don't know. How much do you think they carry people from that place where they carry the chair? Okay, no, they touch me now. 100 naira. Uh -huh. He agreed to pay. Eh, hey, because that was what you said was the fair. Uh, why yeah, why you not going to pay you? Why you they extort your customer? You see this corruption, corruption, what would they hear for news? They see for people everywhere, nine big so. This is corruption, not in our country. Ah! Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Welcome back. And now to the international scene, officials in Kenya say five police officers were killed on Wednesday when a vehicle hit an improvised explosive device which is suspected to have been planted by Somalia's Al-Shabaab group. Now Al-Shabaab is fighting to topple Somalia's government, establish their own rule based on their strict interpretation of Islamic law and drive out the country's peacekeeper who were deployed by the African Union. Now, the militants frequently launch attacks in neighboring Kenya to pressure it to withdraw its troops, from which part of its peacekeeping force. Now, Harun Kamal, the deputy county commissioner in the region, said the police officers were in a vehicle conducting patrols in Harar village in Liboy town near the Kenya Somalia border when the vehicle hit the device. Tunisian Interior Minister Lotfi Abram has dismissed 10 people, including local police and security chiefs in the coastal city of Sfak and Krakena Island, following a preliminary investigation into Sunday sinking. Now, Abraham announced the dismissal late on Tuesday. The boat mishap, which occurred on the shores of Tunisia, left an estimated 112 migrants trying to reach Europe dead or missing. It is the deadliest shipwreck this year on the dangerous route from North Africa across the Mediterranean Sea. To Europe. And to news in sports, Nigeria's Super Eagle lost 1 0 to Czech Republic in their final friendly match ahead of the 2018 World Cup. Now, Eagles produced a group performance but failed to find a way past a resolute Czech defense. They will now head to Russia, where they are expected to make it through to at least the quarterfinal stage. They begin their group campaign against Croatia on June 16 and then play Iceland on June 21 before ending the group stage against Argentina on June 26. Nigeria has never made it past the second round.
The Dutch coach who led Nigeria's football team to victory in the 1996 Olympics has been handed a gift promised to him by the government 22 years ago. BBC Pigeon reports that John Bonfrey received the keys to a three-bedroom apartment in the capital city Abuja from Power Works and Housing Minister Babatunde Raji Fashala. It fulfills a pledge made to him by the administration of the late military ruler Sania Bacha, who was in power when Nigeria beat Argentina 3-2 in the finals at the 1996 Olympic Games in the United States. Meanwhile, in basketball, the Tigers of Nigeria will be camping, begin camping for their Group B FIFA World Cup qualifiers on June 19 in Lagos against Uganda, Rwanda and Mali under, under the supervision of head coach Alex Nwora. The Secretary General of the Nigerian Football Federation, Chimezie Asiegbu, made this known on Tuesday as the Federation intensifies efforts to ensure that the team maintains its 100% winning record in the qualification series. Now, with invited players already contacted and the availability confirmed for the June window being hosted by Nigeria, the officials list is expected to be released next week. The team is initially meant, was initially meant to camp in Buffalo in the United States, but according to the NBBF Vice President Babatunde Ogunade, the exercise will now take place in Lagos. And that wraps it up on news now. Do log on to our website at www.tv360nigeria.com to get more news updates and watch more of our programs. You can also watch us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash TV360 online and on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash TV360 Nigeria. We are also live on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TV360 Nigeria and we're also on Google Plus and our handle is TV360 Nigeria. Thank you very much for watching. I am Esther Vesey. Thank you.